Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So today, uh, this is a meatloaf episode. Um, I don't remember what number it is. Um, anyway, uh, got a couple of uh, viewer appreciation uh, boxes that showed up, or envelopes actually in this case. And then uh, we're going to start the repair of a, uh, a damaged shaft that has a tapered end on it. So uh, we're going to take a look at that. And uh, we're going to do some weld buildup and then uh, recut a, uh, a taper without a reference standard. So that would be kind of interesting. Um, and I don't know what else I got. Uh, I'll probably throw something else in there too. So uh, let's get an apron on. Let's go look at some, uh, some packages and some uh, broken parts and uh, let's get going. Okay, so first one here, this comes to us from uh, um, John at PTC Instruments and uh, looks like I'm getting uh, inundated with uh, 55 degree Whitworth stuff. Um, he sent me a little uh, um, thread gauge, thread pitch gauge here and this is specifically for, uh, for Whitworth here. So um, <laughs> anyway he's got some interesting uh, numbers on it, uh, I guess I'm going to have to look these up. So for example, this first one here, this first leaf says 18G 5 16 and then the next one is 16G 3 eighths. So I haven't looked this up, I don't quite know what that means, so uh, I got to do, uh, uh, do a little research there. Anyway, uh, this is John Marcus, uh, PTC Instruments. Thanks John, appreciate that. <laughs> um, it uh, the leaves this thing had come unscrewed in the package and actually one of the leaves uh, snuck out of the box uh, during shipping so but you know what it'll probably be a hundred years before I even notice uh, uh, that leaf missing so anyway thank you very much okay so this next one here uh, this one comes to us uh, from uh, a viewer in New Zealand uh, this is Mike Clayton and uh, Mike watches uh, the channel and uh, he just he saw me uh, fussing around with these Whitworth things and uh, so he sent me this little thread pitch gauge or not pitch gauge I'm sorry it's a, a thread grinding gauge um, and alignment gauge so it's got uh, actually this has got everything on it so it's got Whitworth it's got Acme it's got 60 degree um, and it's got 47 and a half degree BA uh, Bastard, <laughs> I don't know, bastard acme, <laughs> I don't know what that is actually, uh, or it escapes me at this moment in time. Anyway, there's no brand on this particular, uh, this particular gauge, uh, but it's kind of a nice one actually because it's got every, everything on one. Anyway, uh, um, he, uh, I guess he got a bunch of these and um, so he figured he'd uh, send one along. This one came all the way from New Zealand. So, Mike, thank you very much, appreciate it. Uh, uh, I'll try this out next time I have to do, uh, well, probably not a Whitworth, but a, uh, uh, an Acme or a 60 degree. So uh, this looks like kind of a nice gauge. So thank you very much. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the repair job that I mentioned. And what this is, is it's a, uh, uh, a drill press spindle assembly. So this is, the, this is the rotating part here and the, uh, the upper pulley uh, rides on this and then the quill moves up and down okay and the quill is the bearing housing okay and uh, the shaft uh, uh, runs on these bearings okay well Kurt was having some problems he had a lot of run out on this thing and uh, we went back and forth on email um, actually quite a few times he sent me some pictures and I asked him to take some measurements and uh, anyway I think we got to the bottom of it as uh, somebody had installed the wrong bearings. Um, this is a 5 8 shaft and um, they had uh, some metric bearings in there and what he really needed was these little uh, whatever these are, R15s or something or uh, what are these? Of course I can't quite read it so anyway uh, these are inch bearings here. Uh, they fit the housing and they fit the shaft the way he wants. Now, the problem um, that we're going to work on here, and this is actually of interest to a lot of people, that's why I took the job on, um, is he's got a damaged taper here. And um, 
you can't quite see it now because he cleaned it up pretty well. Somebody had been beating on this and uh, trying to disassemble it and uh, they mushroomed this and displaced a bunch of metal. So this taper is NFG here and um, and I measured it and it's it's too small right now. Uh, after he cleaned it up it's kind of too small. So what happens is is the chuck taper it slips on it comes on too far and it doesn't seat properly. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some weld buildup on that, okay, and give us some material to work with, and then we're going to recut that taper. Now, I'm going to probably do the taper recutting in a separate video, just so it's kind of a standalone thing, because that's a very specific subject and um, um, and of interest across the metalworking community. So I don't want it to get buried in a meatloaf. Uh, uh, episode. So we'll do the we'll do the preparatory stuff here. We'll get this built up and uh, um, and take you know uh, maybe do some rough turning on it. But then when we get to the precision part of this, then uh, that'll be a separate video. Okay. So uh, anyway, this is all the bits of it, and uh, he's got a chuck here too, um, and it's. It's a little chowdery here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but somebody was whooping on this pretty good here. So um, it's kind of got the, uh, the the mangled look to it. Well, if the chuck, you know, it seems to function okay. And, you know, these are pretty tough chucks. So what we'll do is uh, once we get this turned to spec, uh, we'll slip this on there and uh, see how it fits. And then uh, then we'll check the run out here and, uh, and see if this chuck is serviceable. Okay, anyway, so that's kind of the project, and uh, so let's uh, we'll go over to the welding area and we'll uh, do a little weld buildup on that and uh, go from there. Okay, so here we are, kind of close to going here. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to um, run uh, beads or weld buildup in this direction here. So, we're going to run one here, and we'll rotate at 180, run one here. Rotate it 180, do one next to that one, you know, and then so on and so on and so on, and we'll just kind of build this up. Uh, one layer is probably enough. Um, I got to get a little bit on the length. So I'm going to start on this end, uh, which will be the cooler end initially, um, and you generally get a little more build up on the start, and, uh, and then I'll come back and probably do a little bit on the, uh, on the end. So um, anyway, I'm going to put the self-darkening hood in front of here. I'm going to try a couple things with the exposure and see if we can get some um, uh, Jody-like uh, awesome uh, arc shots here. So let's try that. Okay, so here we go.
Okay, so there, uh, there it is after the weld buildup, and uh, now we're going to go stick it in the lathe and uh, take a couple skim cuts on it. Okay, so over here on the lathe, um, normally I would just probably just chuck this up um, in the <clears throat> in the chuck, um, but we want to we want to indicate this and get it nice and accurate uh, with that diameter. Also, this uh, this big six job doesn't close down small enough unless I take out every other jaw, which I don't really want to do. So I'm going to use one of my little uh, insert chucks here. It's a little four jaw here that I have a little stub on the back of and I can just stick it in the uh, um, in the main chuck. Oop, I want to stick it out a little farther. Yeah, that clears. Okay. And I lock that in, and now I can put the shaft in there. I can hold something real small. The other thing I can do is I can I could dial it in. So um, uh, it's actually really close right now. Um, okay. Actually, let me go around and look at it here. So Adam, I have a smaller four jaw than you. Ha ha. <laughs> Alright, let's put that in like that. And then I'm gonna leave a little bit so that I can indicate on that. Let's get these whoop, kind of bearing on there. All right, so they're all kind of kind of snugged. All right, it's running out a little bit. <clears throat> the old uh, indicator on here. Indicator. All right. Let's see what we got here. Here. Okay. A ways to go there. That's my high. All right. I'm gonna have to back that off considerably. Pretty tight, so we gotta loosen this one just to skosh. Tighten that one. Oop, made it worse. I must have grabbed the wrong one. Oh well. Chuck wrench is kind of small. This kind of stuff. That's a high. That one. Right. 
Alright, that's more like it. Alright, let's make sure all these are tight. <clears throat> Thanks for killing my hand. Alright, that's about one, something like that. That'll be alright for this thing. I'll maybe get a little more. Let me uh, find that high. That's better. Hey, now we're talking. Okay. Alright, so that's pretty good. Um, so now... So now we need to set the compound up for this angle, and this is a uh, number 33 uh, Jacobs taper on this, that's what the chuck has. Um, so now I don't happen to have a standard that, uh, that I can use to align my uh, compound rest, so we're going to um, have to align the compound rest, we're going to take some test cuts and take some measurements, and I'll show you guys how to measure that. and. Uh, and cut it to the book specifications uh, without having a, a sample, okay? Uh, so that the diameter is correct on the small end, the diameter is correct on the large end, and um, um, it's the right length. So, uh, kind of tricky to measure. That'll be another video. So this is about as far as we're going to go on this one today. Uh, we're set up, we're kind of ready to go, and then the next one will be dealing with how to set up for tapers and cut a taper uh, accurately, okay? All right, so this is this uh, little Stanley four ounce uh, ball peen hammer. We're gonna try a little, uh, a little reconditioning here. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab a rag device. Um, so I'm gonna, somebody spray painted it with gold paint here. So let's try some denatured alcohol first. And I'm just gonna wet this. With this handle here, see if that's enough to get that gold paint off. It looks like it's working. Get down to the natural, the natural wood. It felt, you know, the handle felt kind of ooky uh, with the. Uh, with that paint on there, so like slightly sticky, you know. All right, that's a good start. Yeah, the handle looks pretty good. See how thin that is there? It's just nice. You know, it's just got a nice feel to it. All right. So part of the, the trick here is to not lose some of the, uh, the age patina, right? But still, I don't know what that is, that might be somebody's initials there, but still uh, kind of kind of clean it up, you know, and not give it that <laughs> over-the-top uh, kind of look you see sometimes at, uh, at the flea market there, where somebody just hits this on the wire wheel and goes to town on it, you know, and uh, it's got the look. So, yeah, that's not bad. Um, so we're going to recondition this face here a little bit because it's kind of beat up. This is looking pretty good here. I might just hit that with a little scotch bright and, uh, uh, and just shine that up. I'll probably leave this alone. It looks like it's got some of the original paint in there. I'm gonna do a little more cleaning there. So uh, I'm gonna get a different rag and uh, I think I'm gonna try a little, uh, that was denatured. I'm gonna try a little acetone next uh, with uh, the next thing. Try a little, little acetone on gray scotch bright here. See what we get. This has got a little, little 
the white has no abrasive in it basically it's just kind of a scrubber pad yeah this is I can feel the uh, there okay that's better Looks pretty good. All right, let's uh, get a little, a little twisty flex on that. All right, that's not aggressive enough. I got some red here too. Put them in the lathe and clamp them there, but that's <laughs> that's uh, slightly uh, slightly frightening there. Although if you go slow, it's probably fine. This has got some little marks in it. We might have to go on the Scotch Bright wheel a little bit and uh, smooth those out. Um, let me work that a little more, and then uh, we'll see what we get. Trying a little paper on this to see if I can get some of uh, some of those pits out of there without going to the uh, any kind of power methods. And they're coming out. This is not very. Uh, okay. That's about 220. Eh? I'm gonna get some uh, coarser stuff. All right, so this is 180 here. Oh yeah, that's the one. None of them are very deep, it's just, uh, you know, when you do it by hand, you get to know the tool a little bit and all its little, little flaws and stuff, and, uh, and, you know, you never go too far, too far sour, uh, when you're doing hand stuff, you know, you can stop and go, ooh, hey, that's not working, and, uh, a lot of times with power methods, uh, you don't get that. You don't get that opportunity. I don't know how far I'm going to go here. This is actually looking pretty good. For the face, we will go on the uh, on the wheel, um, cause just because it's pretty it's pretty easy to control. I'm not real worried about it. Yeah. This looks like green paint on there, huh? I don't know how these came originally, actually. 
Yeah, the handle's in good shape. I think that's an original handle. All right, let's do a little bit of work on the face. Okay, so this is a uh, Scotch-Brite um, deburring wheel here. Um, and there's, there's the face. Now, this has a basically a flat face to it. And uh, uh, with these rounded, with these rounded, well, it's actually kind of a chamfer. So what we want to do is just take off. It's got some scoring in there, and we'll get, we'll try to get down below that. Um, I'm going to grab a little. I didn't bring it over, but I'm going to grab a little piece of sheet metal. Uh, no, I'm not going to use my scale uh, to kind of true this wheel up a little bit and open it up. Um, actually, maybe do I have that other? Oh, you know what? I'm going to try this other truing thing I, I got. I got... This is a belt dresser. I don't know how it'll work on this. Let's... Sounds cool. I don't think it's doing anything, though. Yeah, I don't think that's doing anything. Uh, this is for sanding belts here. Um, I got this at the flea market a while back. Um, I've tried it a couple times, but I haven't noticed <laughs> noticing anything fun with it. Let me. Uh, I usually do these with sheet metal. Let me go grab a piece of sheet metal. Okay, so I got a piece of sheet metal, and it's. I use the burr edge. Okay. To kind of open up the wheel. Okay. Let's give it a go here. So you can see what we're going after there. It's got. I don't know what the hell that is there. It's. Uh, maybe it was sitting in water or something like that. Um, right at that line. Yeah, I might have to get a little, a little more aggressive with this. Now this will make a lot of heat here. Uh, I'm gonna have to cool this off here. when you're looking at this stuff so you, you rarely know when to stop properly well let's try that okay so hopefully you can see that pretty good it's got a nice finish on it that's about as far as I'm gonna go this is looking pretty good it's ready to go into use now I had mentioned before before that it's nice to have your hammer faces polished if you're doing um, high-class metal work or uh, it's just nice to have them polished um, not you don't need it for everything but that surface will transfer into the metal that you're working on and as an example I have a piece of soft copper here um, and I have another hammer that hasn't really had much done to it this is a plum and uh, you can see the face is, you know, obviously usable, right? Um, but just as an example, we're just going to make a couple of strikes in this, uh, um, in this soft copper and compare the indentations. So, um, um, well, let's, let's do, the, do this little guy first here. Get a couple. I want to try to hit it kind of straight, so. All right. And... Hopefully this thing will, uh, will it focus? Uh, get up there. All right, I'm gonna have to go to manual focus there. 
Um, Let me try that again. <laughs> All right, let's try that again there. Maybe you can see that. I'll roll it around a little bit. So this is with this rough hammer and it faithfully <laughs> reproduced that funky surface in that, uh, that indentation there. All right, you can kind of see that. <clears throat> All right, let's, let's do Mr. Polish there. And there's Mr. Polish. Let's see if we can get a good flat strike here. Okay, and then hopefully you can see that. And I'll just roll it around a little bit, hoping that the uh, the reflection shows. But you can see that that finish in that dent is nice, right? So you know if you're if you're doing something, right? You know maybe you're working a piece of copper around the corner, right? You know, every time you whap it, it's picking up that finish, right? So, what kind of finish do you want? You want a nice finish or a a, a chowder finish? Anyway, just a, kind of a little demo there. So there's our little Stanley four ounce, kind of spiffed up a little bit and ready to go into the uh, the hammer rack for use.